So in Storyline, you always have complete control over the visual design of your quiz. And in the last tutorial, we looked at how easy it was to just really quickly build a quiz question. Well, in this tutorial, we're going to look at how to customize our quiz question using Slide View. So right now, we're still in Form View from the previous lesson. But if we come over here to Slide View, we're looking at a slide that's pretty much like any other slide that you would see in Storyline. You have your text on the slide, which can be moved around. You have your choices. You have an image on the file. If you look down here in the slide layers, you'll notice that not only do you have the base layer, but you have a correct and incorrect layer as well. And these were automatically created when we built the question, when we first inserted that multiple choice question. Now these are also just as customizable as the slide. For now, we're going to keep these at default and let's return to the base layer. All right, let's go ahead now and just make the slide look a little different. And we'll do that by rearranging our slide objects. First thing I want to do is just delete this picture. And you can see it has a placeholder uh, for it as well. I'm going to delete that. So press delete twice. Next thing I want to do is arrange my choices. And you can see that as I select each choice, they have their own bounding box. But then there's also this external bounding box that holds all of the, uh, the choices. So the first thing I want to do is just drag this out to give it some more room. Then I'm going to shift click inside each of these to select their each, each of these bounding boxes. And from here, I can actually resize them now by dragging in. And you see that with their, I'm dragging the selection boxes for each of the choices, but I still have this outer bounding box that's taking up most of the slide. Now I can just come in here, shift click these again, and start to move them around. And what I want to do is just place, place them in a row. And if I shift click each of them, I can move them down. And let's just go ahead and arrange them by going to Arrange, Align, and we'll light them to the middle. And then we just need to, one more time, align them, distribute horizontally. And maybe I could move them over in the center just a little bit more. And let's go ahead and insert a background image for our quiz. We can do that by going up to Insert, Picture, and then Picture from File. And you have this flag image. Go ahead and select that. And I'm just going to scale this image up a little bit so it fits our slide. There we go. Now, since this is going to be the background image, I need to move it to the bottom of the timeline. So I can just click and drag to move it below everything. So you can now it's at the bottom. And let's go ahead and call this flag BG for flag background and lock the layer just so we don't accidentally select it. And we can customize this a little bit better because right, the flag is too bright. It's actually making it really hard to read our question choices. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert a shape and use that as sort of a, a cover here. And I'll drag that to the same size as my slide. And let's change it to a dark gray color. And we'll get rid of that outline, so no outline. And we'll add just a little bit of transparency. So right click, format shape. And here we can dial in some transparency. That might be okay. Yeah, maybe around 10. Okay, close. And then I'm going to drag this to the bottom so it's just above the flag. And actually, I might just add a little bit more transparency here. A little bit less, actually. There we go. And let's change the color to something darker. Okay, close. I'm going to lock this layer just so I don't accidentally nudge that. And let's rename this to Cover BG, Recover Background. Now it's hard to read. So we can't really read the choices. So I'm going to shift click these and we'll change the color to white. And let's change the title to white as well. And we could probably make this quiz question a little bigger and make it bold. There we go. Now let's add the images of each of the presidents. And we can do that by going back to insert, picture from file, and to select multiple items here, I can select one and hold my control key down and click each of the three presidents. Click open, and they're a little big, so I can actually hold my shift key down and click inside the timeline, right? So now I've selected all three of them, and now I can resize these guys together 
and get them on the slide. So Washington, move over here, Jefferson. And if I want to align them, I can shift click as well. And then we'll do align middle and align vertically, distribute horizontally. All right, so let's go ahead and preview the file. Preview the slide. All right, so here's our quiz, but there's something that's off, right? We can see that the, the titles, right, of the, uh, the choices are not correctly aligning with each of the presidents because this is Washington and this should be a Washington underneath. But these choices down here, they're being shuffled. And that's just one of the options that we have with the quiz question. So when you're creating something like this where you're working with the standard radio buttons and you're working with images, you'll likely want to turn off the shuffle option so that each of the choices correctly aligns with your images. So let's go back to form view, close the preview, and jump over here to form view, and we can correct that by just turning off shuffle. So if we set that to none, then each of our choices down here will remain static. And now if we preview our quiz again, each of the choices is correctly aligned with the graphic above it. We make our choice, submit, and then we get our feedback. And that's basically it for customizing quiz questions. In this lesson, we learned how to take the initial quiz question from form view and then use some basic options in slide view to customize the way that looks, including the background, the layout of the choices, as well as add some uh, custom images for each of the choices. Now it's really just a matter of you practicing the activity and going on to build your own quiz questions. And as always, if you have any questions, please ask in the forums and we'll be more than happy to help you out.